How frequently have you been told that success comes from hard work? Undoubtedly, a great deal, and it's true. Achieving one's goals requires putting in a lot of effort, and this is true for many reasons. Success in life is something that nearly everyone strives for. We hope to advance in our endeavors and improve as people. But while some of us might only hope for success one day, for others, it is a reality. One such example of hard work and dedication is William Durant, the American businessman and founder of General Motors Corporation, which grew to become one of the world's greatest firms in terms of sales. William Durant's life story is both incredibly inspiring and exemplary. How did William Durant achieve success so quickly? What exactly is he known for? And most importantly, was he able to retain his fortune or did his great career take an unexpected turn? Let's find out together. William Crapo Durant, who later became the creator of General Motors, was born on December 8, 1861 in the city of Boston, Massachusetts. At the age of 17, William Durant decided to stop attending school in defiance of his family's hopes and dreams for him to pursue a career in law. Durant's first job was stacking logs, and his second job was working in the cigar business. He single-handedly surpassed the sales of three other representatives. By the time he was 24 years old, Durant had already established himself as a prosperous businessman in the historic lumber town of Flint, Michigan. In 1885, Durant tied the knot with Clara Pitt. However, after the birth of their daughter Marjorie, the couple decided to end their marriage and divorce. In the year 1886, Durant made the decision to enter the automobile industry. He used the money he borrowed to purchase a modest horse cart business. The only thing he ended up with was a design patent for two finished carts. Almost immediately, Durant entered one of his carts into a competition and won first place. Even though he had not yet constructed a single cart, he returned to his hometown with orders for over 600 of them. In the year 1904, James Whiting was successful in convincing Durant to take over leadership of the Buick Motor Company. By 1908, Durant had transformed the failing company into the most successful automobile manufacturer in the country. In the same year, 1908, he tied the knot with his second wife, Catherine Lederer, who was born from Jackson, Michigan. After only 15 years, the initial investment of $2,000 in the Durant Dort Carriage Company had expanded into a corporation worth $2 million. With its original plant, Factory One, located in Flint, it had grown to become the most successful automobile manufacturer in the United States. For his contributions to the carriage industry, William Durant was crowned King of Carriage Makers. At the age of 40, Durant had already amassed a million dollars and he was eager to embark on exciting new experiences. Now that things at the Durant Dort Carriage Company were operating well, Durant found himself with too much free time on his hands. By the year 1900, a variety of brands of horseless carriages were already being sold in the United States. In order to keep its reputation as Vehicle City, the city of Flint needed the success of the automotive industry. To preserve the city of Flint and the firm from bankruptcy, James Whiting of Flint Wagon Works purchased Buick. However, he required a savvy young businessman to assume leadership, and Durant was the guy for the job. Initially, Durant showed zero enthusiasm. He criticized automobiles, calling them loud, deadly contraptions that scared both humans and animals. But he was prepared to try. He spent a couple of months alone in the Buick, cruising about on various highways. He was so taken aback by the experience that he decided to take over management of Buick in 1904. In 1908, Buick output was higher than that of both Ford and Cadillac put together. In a little more than three years, Durant had successfully transitioned from being the largest carriage producer to becoming the largest vehicle manufacturer. The Flint employees started to look up to Durant. Durant and Benjamin Briscoe of Maxwell Briscoe considered a merger of the four major automakers, Buick, Ransom E. Olds, Maxwell Briscoe, and Ford into a single corporation called the International Motor Car Company as a hedge against the unpredictability of the nascent automotive industry. When Ford and Olds declined to sign on, Briscoe tried again to secure financing and failed. However, this idea continued to get Durant support. In the middle of the night in 1907, Durant got a call regarding a massive motor industry merger orchestrated by the banker J.P. Morgan. A few weeks later, Durant gathered three other auto industry titans in his room at the prehistoric Ponce Train Hotel for a conference. They were Ransom Olds of REO, Henry Ford, and Maxwell Ben Briscoe's Briscoe. 
Ford's demand for cash, rather than stock, terminated negotiations. However, Durant had a backup strategy. He was aware that Oldsmobile was struggling. He boarded a late night train to Lansing, Michigan, woke up the Olds authorities, and suggested they merge their company with Buick and Oldsmobile to form a holding company called General Motors. They concurred, and on September 16, 1908, General Motors was officially founded. The year 1910 witnessed the emergence of significant difficulties. Large automobiles lost popularity and sales dropped. Henry Ford's sole product, the affordable and dependable Model T, was a huge success. GM, on the other hand, had 21 distinct major automobile models across 10 different divisions, very few of which were financially successful. The public's perception of Durant shifted from brilliant thinker to naive gambler. If General Motors, GM, was going to survive, Durant had no choice but to give the bankers control for the five years beginning on September 26, 1910, to repay the debt. But Durant wasn't done yet. He had already begun speaking with Lewis Chevrolet, a former racing champion for Buick. Chevrolet, a courageous racer and innovative engineer, defeated Barnley Oldfield in his debut contest. Durant was impressed by his racing capabilities, and in 1909, he agreed to drive for the Buick racing team. Half of America's road races were won by the Buick squad in two racing seasons. Together, they established the Lewis Chevrolet named Chevrolet Motor Company in 1911. As the first production car to include a valve and head engine, the Ford Model T saw a surge in interest after its 1914 debut in two distinct variants. In 1915, DuPont was chosen to serve as the director of General Motors, where he played a significant role in the success of the business. He is renowned for having made a sizable personal investment in the organization. However, Durant continued to buy more GM stock while holding on to his existing holdings. In 1916, Durant revealed to the GM board that Chevrolet had acquired a majority stake in the company. The General Motors Board of Directors chose Durant to serve as president once more. Later, in 1920, DuPont succeeded Durant as president of General Motors, and he held the position until his departure in 1923, when Alfred P. Sloan Jr. took over. Durant consented to leave General Motors in exchange for Pierre DuPont clearing out his debts. The Great Depression put an end to Durant's career in the automotive industry in 1921, when he attempted to run a company under his own name called Durant Motors. Durant filed for bankruptcy in 1936, after his company was shut down in 1933. Following the demise of Durant Motors, Durant and his second wife survived on a pension supplied by Walter Chrysler and Alfred Sloan. Soon after, he established a bowling alley and fast food restaurant called North Flint Recreation in Flint, Michigan, not far from the Buick plant. Flint's first drive-in restaurant, the Horseshoe Bar, was also established by Durant. To capitalize on the growing demand for family-friendly entertainment, Durant planned to open 30 additional bowling alleys over the next few years. However, after a long battle with cancer, Durant passed away on March 19, 1947 in New York. What are your thoughts about the life of William Durant? Post your answers in the comments section below.